win, lose, no matter. That's what Mr. Miyagi says to Danny LaRusso in The Karate Kid. And it just, it is a great, great mantra to live by. Welcome to Beyond the Rut, the podcast about helping you pursue and achieve your dreams without compromising your faith, your family, or your health. I'm your host, Jerry Dugan. And in this episode, you and I are going to have a conversation about the Netflix series, Cobra Kai. Why? Because. Now, the serious thing is my wife and I just had a conversation, uh, not a conversation. We binge watched this at the time of this recording, all four seasons that are up as of January, 2022. And after watching those four seasons, I realized there are some powerful lessons about getting beyond the rut. And in this episode, we're going to talk about Danny LaRusso or Daniel LaRusso, the hero from Karate Kids part one, two, and three. And did he become a bad guy? What are the ruts he faced in resting in his laurels? Because if we explore that, we can identify in our own lives. Are there any areas in our lives where we're resting on our laurels and taking things for granted? Because those things could be holding us back. So sit back and relax. Get that remote control ready. Because after you listen to this episode, you'll probably want to watch Cobra Kai and maybe Karate Kid 1, 2, and 3 all over again. Here we go. Now, I didn't really go anywhere. <laughs> I just, I, I, out of habit, uh, I just like to say that intro, and then we go right into a previously recorded conversation with a guest. Uh, so, right now, I decided I'm going to do a three-part series on my insights from Cobra Kai, and this is week two. So, last week, or last week's episode, episode 290, we explored Johnny Lawrence and his struggle, or his rut, of limiting beliefs and negative self-talk. And then we gave examples of that and the impact it had on his life. But then we also started to look at our own lives. What are some of the things that we hold near and dear inside of our hearts that are truly limiting us from our potential and living the lives we want to live, to have that significance, to have that impact that we desire. So that was that episode. If you haven't heard it, go check it out, come right back. Or after this episode, Go check that one out. They're meant to be standalone, standalone. Whoo, man, I, this is my native language, guys. This is embarrassing. Uh, in any way, in any case, uh, either one of those mutually exclusive, they all just tie back into Cobra Kai and they tie into the ongoing theme about how do you live life by making your own path and live beyond the rut. So this episode, we're going to talk about Daniel LaRusso. And if you know the franchise for Karate Kid, you know that uh, Daniel is the hero. He is the kid who was bullied in the first movie, got the girl. And in the second movie, he lost that girl, uh, goes to Okinawa with his mentor and sensei, where he helps his sensei uh, face some old demons or skeletons in his closet while also facing some fears of his own, some challenges of his own, and starts to become a young man. And he also meets a beautiful young woman in Okinawa. And then part three is where Daniel is now faced with fear. I think metaphorically the fear of growing up, but also the fear of somebody coming after him just to embarrass him and take him out. Uh, very dark uh, as far as those three movies go. We're now about to explore Daniel LaRusso in the Cobra Kai series. So if you haven't seen it yet, that series, and you want to, this is your spoiler alert. After this point, I'm going to share some of the details and some of the outcomes from the four seasons so far. If you don't want any of that to come out to you now, then you need to come back to this episode. Download it to your phone. Watch all four seasons on Netflix of Cobra Kai. Come on back. Now, if you really don't care about that show, you're just curious about the show. You're curious about what I have to say about the show, but you yourself have no intention of going to watch it, or it's not that big of a deal for you, then proceed. Here we go. Or if you've already watched the show, of course, then we've got that context to build off of. So Danny LaRusso, the hero from one, two, and three of the Karate Kid movies. It's now 34 years later. He's a success. He's a successful businessman. He has a car lot. He's married. He has two children, everything on the outside looking in. He has made a name for himself. He has found wealth, 
both in family and in finances. The community loves him. He's involved. And at the same time, if you look past the surface, though, you get the impression of somebody who also, like Johnny Lawrence, peaked in high school. Now, the difference is where Johnny was stuck in this failure or what he thought was a failure and then internalized that and made himself the failure and told himself he was. Danny goes the opposite direction. That one win, well, actually three wins, <laughs> the one in the first tournament, the one in Okinawa, and the win in the second tournament, all galvanize Daniel LaRusso's new persona combined with Miyagi-Do karate philosophy. Uh, so all the lessons he's learned from Mr. Miyagi have made him su successful. So according to Daniel, his poo does not stink. Life is good because he's followed Miyagi-Do uh, concepts. He has kicked the competition, as his sales gimmick says, and he could do no wrong. And because of this, because of his successes, because he's got the wife, the children, the success both in business and in money, uh, he feels he could do no wrong. And you see him start to rest on his laurels. And so some of those things are he holds on to the fact that he's the two-time All-Valley champion. And I'm thinking to myself, that tournament has been around for like 50 years by the time the first season comes around. Are we saying that Daniel LaRusso is the only person who's won that tournament twice or more? Because chances are there are like four-time champions. There are many champions because somebody has won this thing every year that they've had this tournament. But for some reason, Daniel is special because he's won it twice. And he puts it into his sales pitch uh, with his billboards, his advertising, his persona as an adult in the community. Goes back to 34 years prior when he was in high school. Hey, remember, I was the two-time All-Valley champion. That's like a guy in his 60s saying, hey, remember, I was the, uh, the high school quarterback in this town. And, and for some towns, that's a big deal. But that, that's where Johnny, or not Johnny, that's where Danny's mind is. He, he won twice in high school, and he expects the community to respect that and open doors for him because of that. You know, that's, that's meant to be his gimmick to open doors. You know, another thing is, like, his family. He's got blind spots in his family. You know, his, his daughter was involved in a hit-and-run accident. Now, she was in the back seat, not driving, but she was involved in this accident, the accidents with Johnny Lawrence, it wrecks his car, but he's blind to that. He's oblivious. His daughter is dating a guy who turns out to be a jerk and he's oblivious to that. Uh, his wife feels like he is more into himself than in his marriage and it's putting a strain on their marriage and he's oblivious to that. And, and so that's a blind spot there. And then one thing that we pick up on in season four is that his son, Anthony or Antonio, I forget which. They call him Ant through most of the show. But Ant is a middle schooler and he's a bully. He's like the ringleader of four kids who pick on a newcomer to the school so much that they drive that kid into Cobra Kai under the leadership of John Kreese and becomes a bully himself. So things are not going well in the home of Daniel LaRusso. And then on the business front, because he has that success as kicking the competition, I give you a bonsai tree every time you buy a car, he starts to get blind to what the competition is doing. He starts to, and then when Johnny, by the way, if, and if you're here and you've watched the show, you know, Daniel's blood starts to boil because Cobra Kai has come back in the very first episode of the show in the first season. And that becomes a distraction for him. You know, how can that thing come back? Because everything about who I am is that I defeated that dojo. And if that dojo comes back, then that negates everything that I am. And he feels entitled to take out that dojo. He feels entitled to have respect because he's the two-time All-Valley champion. He feels entitled because he's a successful businessman. He feels entitled to success in many ways that he's missing out, that his competitor is on the other side of town leveraging the bad press, 
leveraging opportunities to take business away from Daniel. And this threatens to just unravel everything that Daniel's life is all about. And we may be in the same boat. You know, we're not two time all Valley champions where we did a crane kick and then our lives were better, or we did that thing with the drum in Okinawa and took out chosen, uh, or you know, grew bonsais on the cliffside and faced some ringer and did some kata and won another champion tournament uh, tournament. But we may be resting on our laurels of some past success. You know, maybe we had a successful military career and 10, 15 years later, we're still expecting people to respect us in the workplace because of what we did 10 years ago somewhere else. Or maybe I've run into this person where they've worked 30 years in a field, uh, not a, an actual field, like in a, a professional field but they've only been in a company for two years at the same level as everybody else on the front line, but somehow expects that those 30 years of experience equate to 30 years of respect from their new coworkers. And among Gen X, that, <laughs> that doesn't exist. You know, respect does not exist in this dojo, does it? Um, and that's because Gen X tends to be very merit-based. Uh, now I'm not going to get into generational differences. That just, that popped in my head just just now. So the point I'm making though, is if we rest on our laurels, if we had a success and we do nothing different to grow beyond that one point of success, we really stalled out. We're dead in the water. We're not growing anymore. Therefore we're dying. And that's kind of what's happening to Daniel is that he's not growing anymore. He has reached a point in his life where he thinks I've got the business. I've got the wife and two kids. I've got the house. I've got the Miyagi do karate teachings. I'm good. There's nothing more I can learn from this world. Now I'm the sage and I pass this all on to everybody else. And the reality is even if we're 80 years old, 90 years old, if as long as we're breathing, we have an opportunity to grow. I'm 45. I'm about to turn 46 and I am still learning. In fact, my reading goal, I increased for 2022. Uh, no, I didn't. I kept it the same, but I added some other stipulations and I might just, you know, add 50% onto the goal. So in 2021, I read 52 books, either by audio or reading it. In 2022, I'm going to read 52 books. So no audio books, just 52 read books. So I'm leveraging and beefing up my skills on speed reading and retention uh, from some Ted talks I've seen from Tim Ferriss in a YouTube video he used. Uh, so the point I'm making is 46 years old. I make good money. I have my family. I have the cat, the dog. I have it all. And most people will think this is where you start to wind down in life. And I'm thinking, no, I, I've only just begun. I can do more. I can learn more. I can share more. So the more I take in, the more I can process, the more I can share with you, with my family, with the, my neighbors, with my coworkers and all that good stuff. And that's the point I want to make here is we pursue success. And when we hit it for some of us, that's it. We stop and we, we, we try to preserve that moment in time. But the reality is the rest of the world is moving on. Boom. So we have our moment of success. We want to stop. We're good. We're done. We're good. What winds up happening is because the rest of the world continued without us five, 10, 15 years from now, we're going to be back where we were stuck in a rut, wondering what happened. Why won't people buy from my business anymore? Why does my family not talk to me anymore? Why can't I get promoted in this job anymore? So that's the thing to be aware of. That's the rut. Daniel son found himself in. He, he started to rest in his laurels in his successes. And it, it was getting to his head, you know, that he was always right. His way was always the right way. And we start to see that people are picking up on it. People are adapting and they're moving on without him. And if he wants to stay relevant in his family's life, he's got to do something different. If he wants to stay relevant in business and provide for his family, he's got to do something different. And if he's going to teach his students how to protect themselves against Cobra Kai under the leadership of John Kreese and now Terry Silver, he's got to expand and grow. 
So that's the rut that I feel Danny LaRusso is facing and going through in most of Cobra Kai. It's that rut of resting in his laurels. And from there, he builds a sense of entitlement that he's entitled to be right. He's entitled to have things handed to him and doors opened for him. And through the show, he finds out he's wrong. His kids don't have to do everything at his beck and call. His daughter doesn't have to do it his way or it's the highway. And he has a couple of moments where he realizes he's screwed things up royally because he thought because of his past successes, he could apply the same formula without any humility and have the same success. But when he didn't, he tries to force that square peg into a round hole. So what do we do when we find out or we have that aha moment? This is probably of the three characters. This might be the hardest because it takes a lot of courage to realize, wow, I've gotten really full of myself. I'm still talking about wins I had 10 years ago at work, 15 years ago at work. As if that is why I should get promoted today into a position I'm not ready for. And, you know, that's why, you know, I, I told my wife I loved her at the wedding. It's 20 years later. When's the last time you told your wife you love her? And not just told her, but showed her. Now, that does not mean drop everything you've got on and walk into the room naked. Uh, <laughs> that could go either way. <laughs> Especially if you've got company. That, that just gets, wow, where the, where this show shifted in a way I didn't expect it to, guys. I'm so sorry. But I want to share with you some solutions that can help you when you realize you're stuck in a rut like Danny LaRusso where you're resting on your laurels and you're finding yourself feeling entitled to a promotion you didn't earn yet entitled to love and respect from your family, uh, entitled to recognition in the community for things you did decades ago. What do we do? And I think first and foremost is you gotta be willing. You gotta be brave to be wrong. You gotta be brave to be wrong and own it when you realize you are wrong. And we see that in the show that I'm trying to think of an example. Um, in one case <laughs> through the very end, actually uh, Danny is a little myth that his daughter is picking up on Eagle Fang karate, Johnny Lawrence's style of karate, you know, that aggression for strike hard, strike first, no mercy. And he doesn't like that. He's always taught Miyagi do to his daughter and that's defense first. And the best defense is to not be there. And here's his daughter that the best thing for her is to embrace this aggression first against an opponent who knows that his daughter is going to go with defense almost predominantly. And so he has to have that bravery to say, you know what? I'm wrong <laughs> in this situation. Uh, my daughter's going to have her butt handed to her unless I let her open up and utilize other styles. And he owns that. And it allows her to just make karate her own, mend or blend the two styles she's learned. And from there, she puts up a great fight. So that's the first thing. Be brave to be wrong. And once you're wrong, own it. The second thing is, and this ties in a lot with the relationships that were at strain or in strain that were strained. There we go. That's what I'm trying to say. So the relationships that were strained because he was full of himself building off of victories that he's had years and years ago, but he's also caught up in trying to shut down Cobra Kai that he almost creates all the drama that we see in all four seasons. He might be the reason why there's all this drama because he is hell bent on shutting down Cobra Kai. He starts to teach a student from Miyagi Do and now the two face each other because he sees somebody could take out Cobra Kai in a tournament. He steps out of his lane as a board member and says, I will be the instructor for that student over there in this tournament. And now he's created a rivalry rivalry that wasn't there before all because he wants to shut down Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai will not taint my memory of overcoming evil, <laughs> that kind of thing. You know, without knowing anything else of what Johnny has gone through, and how things are different, he is going to shut down Cobra Kai. And that puts a strain on his family even more. And it's not until he realizes, wait, 
What's most important to me is my wife. Not this beef I've got with Cobra Kai. My wife. And so when he starts to make amends there, he knows he's messed up. He tries a couple of band-aid approaches, but she holds his feet to the fire. She says, no, I'm holding you accountable. You don't just fix it with sushi. You don't just fix it with some chocolate. So he has to make some true efforts to get his head right and realize. So step number two, who is most important to you in your life? So if things feel like they're just out of whack because you've just kind of gotten complacent in life, maybe you got to rank those, those relationships for me. It's God first, then my wife, then my kids and the rest of you. I love you, but you come after those three rankings. My boss was one shocked when I told him that I put my faith in God higher than the job I was in. And I don't think he was expecting that. I think he was expecting me to say what I need to say to keep my job. But I let him know that if my work was impeding my ability to practice my faith, impeding on my relationship with my family, my wife or my children, the job goes, I can get another job. I can always get another job. It may not have the pay that I have right now. It may not have the benefits I have right now. And on the flip side, it may have better pay and better. Yeah. I don't know if I can replace the team members I've got. I work with some really good people. So I, that I would miss. I would miss that a lot. But that's the point. If my work is going to put my marriage at risk, the work goes. I'll find another job. I'll deliver pizzas if I have to. I'll talk this out with my wife first. I'll let her know, hey, I feel like I don't get to spend time with you because of my work. It's sucking the life out of me. I don't want us to die having divorced <laughs> or having you bitter at me. What do we do differently? You know, what, what can I do differently? Would you be okay if I left my job and did something else? Now, Steve, if you're listening, don't worry, man. <laughs> it's just using the example. Um, and you and I already had the conversation. You know, I'm here. I'm committed. Uh, just, just <sighs> there you go. All right. But the truth is still there though. I mean, if my work in anything, if this became a business and it was getting in the way of my wife and I having the best relationship ever, I would step back. And we've seen people do that. You know, that if something's getting in the way of the most important relationships, step back, give up. In, in Daniel's case, give up the vendetta against Cobra Kai, patch things up with your daughter, patch things up with your wife, figure out what your son is up to. I mean, get rid of those blind spots. Do you know what your family's up to? Do you really have a good solid relationship with them? Or are you just getting lip service from them and kidding yourself that things are okay? So that was number two. Number one was be brave to be wrong and own it. Number two was remember who is most important to you. And the third thing to share with you on how do you get over this resting on your laurels thing is remembering the world owes you nothing. <laughs> you know, you got to earn that trust every single day. And that is just powerful. You know, if you realize the world owes you nothing every single day, then that allows you to get up and build a new, it allows you to get up and build on what you're already working on. When you meet somebody new though, that person owes you nothing. And if you want that trust, you got to do the things that build that trust. So that is my perspective of Cobra Kai seasons one through four, Daniel LaRusso's rut of resting on his laurels, which led to a sense of entitlement. And some of the things I saw him do to get out of that. And from there, we talked about if you find yourself kind of wondering, why are people not promoting me? Why are people thinking I don't have the skill set to go into the next level of my career? Or why does my family act like I haven't been the father here for the last 20 years? Uh, now, your children should respect you. Yeah, that is a value that many of us may have grown up to. But there comes a point where you're shifting gears from the provider of your children to having a relationship with your children that goes into your adult years, because there's still a lot you can provide them as far as wisdom goes. But if you're raising them in a way where all they're thinking about is their escape plan, then you're not really building a relationship with your kids. And that, that is humbling for me. 
you know, that, that changed my whole approach to how I was raising my kids. You know, it sounded cool to raise them with some strict, you know, discipline, you know, Hey, I said, do this, go do this. But I started to realize as they were becoming preteens and even teenagers, they were becoming young adults. And I think I was blessed with some other friends who were older and their kids were starting to leave the coop. And we started to see the ones who had a relationship and the ones who were looking to just get out of there and get as far away from mom and dad as possible and never look back. And we wanted our kids to be able to look back, not move back in, you know, but look back, you know, be a part of our lives. We want to be a part of your life. And to do that, you've got to have a relationship. And I think in Cobra Kai, we see that Daniel is at risk of losing that between him and his son. He's got a good connection with his daughter and partly because she knows karate and he needs her to help him win against Cobra Kai. So even that was putting his relationship at risk. So that's, that goes back to that second thing. Remember who is most important to you. So there you have it. Uh, again, episode one or part one of the series was episode two, nine, zero. So that's beyond the rut.com slash two nine zero. If you haven't heard that one, go back, check that out. This one is episode two nine one. You can see the show notes at beyond the rut.com slash two nine one. I'd love to hear from you what your thoughts were about the show, your thoughts about part one and two of this series. And you can email me info at beyond the rut.com. Again, that's info at beyond the rut.com. Tell me what you liked about the show, what insights you got about living life beyond the rut and what insights stood out to you in this episode, as well as last week's episode. Now, the best thing you could do for my show is to share it with somebody. So however you're listening to this right now, just hit that share button, send it to somebody you think would also love it. Somebody who's watched Cobra Kai and they're trying to get more out of it until season five comes out. Uh, maybe they'll like this. If you know somebody who works in organizational development, leadership development, leadership coaching, send this to them. Maybe they'll like it. So there you have it. Uh, again, the show notes for this episode, beyondtherut.com slash 291. There you'll find links to other episodes like part one, as well as some resources. And, you know, just I just love having this conversation. So until next week, go live life beyond the rut. Take care.